Hi beautiful souls, this is Clara Camino. Today I want to talk about uh, the simulation that we live in. So often I hear that people say, oh we live in a simulation, and then the conversation stops there. Now for me, it actually becomes like even a bigger thing. First of all, I want to understand how the simulation works. I also want to know if we're in the simulation, how can I get out? And can we get out? And where does that wisdom lie to get out? Um, and then how many simulations are we in? So I asked quite a lot of questions. And since I've asked the question, I just want to say, this is like take 3,699. I... Um, Every day I get more and more and more insights. But if I were to make a YouTube about that, I think we are never going to end this conversation. So I'm also now trying to give you all the highlights, the, the big building blocks in the simulation idea and the way out so that one can understand it. I'm also not going to use words, references um, of the intellectual world. Because I think if we've understood it really, like like all of us, we, we wouldn't have asked so many questions maybe, or we would have been out of it already. Even I am not out of the simulation. Um, because a little while ago, I was going, I was doing a lot of transmutations on the wars going on. And I, of course, I go deep into the belly of, of spirituality. And then the divine also brings me these absolute um, healing moments to it. And as I was going through that, I was wondering, but how come... I'm not depressed. How come, um, even if nothing happens, I've, I have these beautiful moments of joy and bliss. And then in my conversation with the divine, it actually says, you know, um, I learn as much on the lighter side of life, on the childlike way. But, and then I asked, but why don't we teach that way? And the divine said, well, that's one of the other matrices that you're in, in the simulations, where we constantly think that we have to learn according to the dark side, according to suffering. We don't have to. It can be actually very funny and humorous. But today it's all simulation. So can we get out? Absolutely. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the way out. But before I go there, I just want to share with you, yes, we are in many simulations. Like I'm in one, my family is in one, my town is in one, my country is in one, and then there's the world one. But that's not all. Every time that I am following a deceptive belief system. I'm actually in a type of a simulation. So there are many ways to get out. Now, the next question is, but then are we ever going to get out? Yes, because they, you know, I think when we designed it, we were very clever, but we weren't very wise because a lot of the simulations is actually just to the power of a more simple simulation. It means that if I can resolve my the, the simulation that I'm in, I also it helps me to resolve the bigger simulation. Now, it sounds so vague. So I think the most elementary way that we can all relate to is to talk about, um, imagine mom and dad being married, things are not going well, and they are children. Now, uh, uh, before we can do that in a very friendly way, you know, a lot of people go like, it's, it's like almost like a war, that they don't serve the papers, they serve the declaration of here comes another war. And 
when the adults can't find their common ground to let go of one another, whether it is suffering or revenge in the ego or whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what the reasons are that they bring to the party. Eventually, many of them, many, 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 and thankfully not all, actually start using the children as their leverage. Now, we're not going to judge that. I just want you to totally jump to any war that you are familiar with. And I'm not talking about a war that where you are standing in the middle, but it, it can be any war around the globe are usually two countries that don't get along. And when they don't reach common ground of how to resolve it, even they revert to using um, humanity, the citizens, the, the non-participants to the war who's having the dispute as the, the collateral damage. And it's, it's one template. It is one template, but it gets escalated. So another way how Spirit has clarified it for me is, is draw a picture in your mind of a shrimp and then of a prawn and then of a lobster or a crayfish. You know, they, they, they're all more or less the same. Uh, funny, cute little faces, eyes that really looks weird. And the meat is in the tail. So they, they've got that type of similarity. So when spirit educated me, it's always like, look at the, the baby, the middle and the big picture. And then resolve it, what is in your personal line of understanding. When we think about any conflict or dispute... The ego mind wants to take me into, let me show you what's right and wrong. Let me show you the revenge. As long as I enter whatever my justification is through the ego mind and I go for revenge, I actually escalate it. Um, if, even if I cannot find a way out, and I do not feel my own revenge. I am already contributing to the way out. How does it work? Because there's many um, other podcasts on the pendulum, like where energies get attracted into a pendulum. It's almost like a snowball running down hill. It just collates more and more snow and eventually it becomes bigger. So my revenge, my anger actually contributes to the snowball of war. So if I can't go for forgiveness, best that I don't escalate into revenge. So forgiveness is not easy. If, if, if forgiveness comes only through a quiet inner reflection. And sometimes I have also found that I go for forgiveness because the alternate route, the, the energy that flows through me is just unbearable. So I will admit that forgiveness is not always easy because when I justify what why I am now the one forgiving you. I'm actually still in my ego mind and I'm just elevating myself. Within forgiveness is a huge compassion for giving the understanding that I don't know. I didn't know then. And even now, I, I can't see that the options that the world is presenting to me is going to contribute to a higher or a better outcome than the one that we are currently in. Therefore, I have to surrender something. And that is what, what is making forgiveness such a challenge for many people. When I look at the options, look at, 
let's first look at divorce and then you can also apply it to countries at war. We are often being asked to choose, even like, like when parents divorce. So which one was right? Which one did the damage? Which one was... It is not as easy as that. And whatever gets shown into the world isn't the full picture. I once had to sit and transmute um, the, the pain, the compassion, the understanding and the forgiveness of those who are in the collective that cheated once on their partners. Um, I thought that was very weird, but anyway, I did it. And it was such an eye-opening to go back, go back, go back, go back. And in the end, you just realize that our the situations that we are in are very, very complex. Um, the war didn't start on the day of declaration. There are so many reasons given through the ego mind. Um, until that time of day. So how do we get out of the simulation is actually by not choosing the two options that the world provides. One has to seek that which lies higher than. It, it has to lie higher on the consciousness table than where the problem resides. That's why someone like Einstein said, you can't solve the problem of at the level where it is created. You have to go higher. Um, if one struggles to even believe in a divinity, I think just ask your own heart presence for what is the, the highest route out of here. I am amazed at how many times I get pushed into a situation where I feel energetically like almost like the cul-de-sac of arguments and the divine holds that the divine holds the solution not our ego mind our ego mind can only repeat what it has been taught shown or experienced the soul through spirit and the divine holds the ultimate exit route. And that is why um, divinity is all possibilities. And for me, that is the intriguing part, is to search for the all possibilities. But I cannot find it on my own. I have to ask the divine. So... It's, it's quite a relationship to think like, but then how many times do you ask? Well, as many as, as you become aware that this is a moment where there's a choice point. I can choose this or this and then um, choose the higher route out. Even the other day, I didn't feel like making food for someone. <laughs> and I wanted to just quickly do something and then... As I walk to my kitchen, I'm like, but why? Why can't I make divinely inspired, delicious food? And, you know, just by raising the question, my energy changed. And then immediately I'm in a new situation because everything that we do is a choice point And it is so much easier when we start with little things. Just operate with kindness towards the people that are in your line of sight. When I was a little girl, um, Spirit showed me how I must hold, I'll, I'll show it like this, how I can hold my hands like that, but I don't touch my fingers and I don't touch my thumb. And what Spirit would say is that your playground. That's, that's your playground where you will learn about me, the divine. And you are most welcome to walk outside of it. But if, it's, if, it's, if you remember, just always return within that circle so that you can find your divinity. And um, so you can ask any question. You can be as curious as you want to be. 
And I thought that was such a, because I, I actually use it till today. Um, ask any questions, but I always ask it from my inner child heart based thing. I don't ask because I want to be in conflict with you. I don't ask because I want to be better than anyone. I don't want to win an intellectual argument. I just want the way out. Okay, so now when we talk about all these different simulations, one of the questions is, but how, how are we going to make them collapse? The best example in the world, how I can explain it to, to someone, is um, based on the documentary John of God in Brazil. He was a spiritual leader who did healing work but what he did was he he had his own his own human darkness take advantage of situations and he also in order to understand and control uh, the people coming to see him a little bit better he basically um asked the people in the restaurants, the taxi drivers, the um, accommodation people to listen to what are these people that are coming to see me basically um, talking about so that he could mark the ones that are very vulnerable. So they don't want to talk about that movie. I want to talk about how the structures will collapse. So once anyone within society finds the thread of the deception anyone can reveal it and we are currently this is the age of the aquarius we are currently in that phase where one by one the deceptions that we followed are being exposed to us when we collectively stand together not in revenge but actually in forgiveness but showing it to the world by by redeeming it for ourselves that structure has to collapse so what happened is when the first person realized this is deception i have been abused others gained courage to come forward and basically the whole town collapsed it happened in such a way because the town's existence became identified in this one man john of god's whole society collapsed because he was imprisoned later on nothing can remain once its time has come to be revealed now i think it's only okay when my critical mind says to me but listen i know this world is a deception how come we still how come we still part of it and again i want to go back to another um, documentary called ashley madison okay sidebar <laughs> why do i quote movies or documentaries or anything like that you know if I share with you the things of my private life, you might think, oh, but that's just her private life. But when I can example movies and documentaries that is available to all of us, you can connect with the energy of it and actually fast track your own feelings world of feeling energy to get out of it. Because consciousness is a feeling of energy, almost like a little homing bird that's being, um, like a pigeon homing bird, I think that's the, bir the birds that we use, that flies and flies and find home. <laughs> okay, it's a sport. I don't know how it's a sport. It's only a sport for the bird. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's not go there. <laughs> um, I'm off, I'm off my own track here. But, Th those homing birds, they, they go a little bit to the west and then they go a little bit to the east and then they go back to the west. So they constantly feel within themselves where does the, 
that radar takes them for where home is. And consciousness is the same. We are all multidimensional. We are on many levels on the consciousness level. And you've got to feel it for yourself. Our sensitivities are not exactly the same. But the beauty is that the divine meets you wherever you are. So you don't need to compare yourself to me and I don't need to compare myself to you. Because my life experiences, my insight, my feeling, my own radar on the consciousness is designed for me as yours are, are for you. That's also why... Um, I actually stopped teaching and I only express my own experiences of the world because you can take it, you can live it, it's my experience. Um, it doesn't need to be the same than yours. If there's common ground, hoo-ha! If there's not, swipe, <laughs> go to the next. <laughs> okay. Ah, Madison, uh, Ashley Madison. So why can't we collapse everything at the drop of a hat um, because when you look at uh, Ashley Madison they it's a dating game for people that are in a marriage that wants to have an extramarital affair now when I heard that I thought how can how can you build a company that does not even honor the sacredness of anything so even when you learn more about it they would ask money for things that they don't even do they even created folk profiles of of in people that you could be interested in everything is such a fraud but you see even when they made that documentary or, or when they actually exposed them and it's a couple of years later that company grew from 37 million to 70 million sub, um, subscribers, members paying. Even after it's hit the news and it's been exposed, it's like saying after everything that we know about Epstein, he's now more popular, he's actually getting more clientele. So what we need to understand is, I've got choices here. I can either allow my own darkness to go and find all my gratifications in what I already know is wrong. Or I have to just say I am, I am aware it is not for me and I have to seek to get out of it at a level on the consciousness table higher than the one where the problems are being created. That's all. It isn't really more difficult than that. The, the thing is that our schooling, our religion, and even the whole woke thing now, everything is designed to keep me entrapped in the ego options. So that's the first thing that I need to get out of. As for me, I, I love my ego. My ego is like the one that comes up with all the silly questions. So I don't allow my ego to make the choice. I don't allow my ego to decide how to interpret anything. I give my ego the job of asking questions. And that's it. My ego can ask as many questions as it wants to. I never insult it. But I allow it. And what happens is, I say, well done. Now let's go to the soul and spirit side and ask that side to answer it. So basically, it's it's a little um, like, a, like a trivia. We have to acknowledge that there's also quite a majority of people that love staying in the simulation, in the deception side. But the more I spend time fighting them trying to convince them the more I actually pull myself out of alignment so I don't even go there I just want to go where my heart takes me to go so the next question is but then who is in control 
of the simulation. And again, that answer comes, uh, leave the world behind. Remember there's this one line where the person says, but, but who's in control? And the other one responded, ah, oh, it's much more scarier than what you think. No one is. By that, what is meant is no one person, but collectively we become a one seeking to get out of the simulation. And our heartfelt resonance, and why don't I say our ego or revenge, because that belongs to the, to the medicine crowd. <laughs> we are of open heart. We seek forgiveness as the way out of it and so it's so I can only get out of my personal um, simulation through my personal forgiveness and not choosing the lower road but the higher road collectively all of us who are choosing the higher road of not adding to revenge but to first not go there and then second option is to then seek forgiveness. Third option is to surrender to the divine to get out of there. So everything that I've now mentioned can actually become a video in itself. If anyone has got like deep, deep difficulty in understanding anything in a very practical way, you can use the comments. <laughs> To raise questions if you are like me exceptionally private then you can use the email <laughs> I will read it once a month now I will eventually read it <laughs> I'm not big on social media um, I just love spending all my time with the divine and getting curious about things and finding it because I the divine must always give me the first insight and settle it in my heart as the truth for, for me and for everyone else. And only once I've mastered it, do I allow the words, the wisdom, the sharing of others to become a confirmation to the wisdom that, that I've grasped. Ah, and remember I've just mentioned leave the world behind. I'm also very aware that a lot of times people are referring to that movie as being predictive. I'm not um, contesting that. But I always, at the end of whatever I see, it can even be an animation, I ask the divine, what is the most profound message in there that I need to remember? And in leaving the world behind, yes, it's very predictive and some would say predictive programming for what is to come on the dark side. But I don't live there. For me, the only wisdom is the fact that what is my role in understanding that there is no one other than the divine or our collective um, resonance taking us outside of the simulation and the other one is, what is relevant for me? And what the divine very, very clearly showed me was the little girl going into the bunker when the uh, nuclear disaster happened to destroy Earth. Now, I do not live in the reality where the nuclear disaster is happening. I live in the reality where the divine will use me um, to follow intuitive guidance and I will just wander off, walk with the knowing or just playfully go into a direction where the divine is taking me for protection. So I don't live in that fear. I, I once... The divine settles a knowing that you, you can't doubt again. And I think that is one of the most perfect designs of how we will all have to seek our guidance straight from the divine, not from me. Because I can only share with you my interpretation, what the divine has shared with me. And if you are fortunate enough, maybe you can feel the calm that I'm feeling. But 
the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate healing actually comes straight from the divine. That knowing of you can be as afraid as you once were, but the divine stops tremors in the body, the fear, everything. But, and it's one question at a time. It is one insight at a time. Some people do get it in, in one bash, but I'm talking about me. And it is, I am in awe. So that's what I'm trying to share with you. <laughs> I hope it comes across. Yay. Okay, so I think um, for now, I'm just going to leave it here. You can, you can also listen to other people who's a little bit more intellectual in their explanation. Once you understand um, the simulation at this basic, almost like inner child level, it's very, very easy to understand the more complex way how other people describe it. It doesn't make it more wrong or more more right than, than anything. Even I listen to um, Neville Goddard, his explanation, and I thought, okay, it's wonderful, but I would not have grasp it at the depth that I did if the divine didn't first give it to me at this very elementary way. Um, and then the other day, oh yes, but also today, I was listening um, to just snippets from Melchizedek's The Dead Sea Scrolls. And I'm like, it is so, to me, to me, it is so elementary. I can absolutely see the simulation of it. You know, even when um, Melchizedek uses like numbers or specific signs and things, I've already received it. To me, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't even know whether other people see it like that. But because I don't know many people... <laughs> that read these books okay so it doesn't matter what I'm trying to share with you is that I first receive from the divine and then the rest becomes confirmations and I love 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 movies one of the things that is another modern day like parable to me is the three body uh, problem now I didn't even want to watch it and then another physicist explained the three-body problem. And I thought, oh, I've got to go for chaos theory. So then I was all like heart and soul into it. And for me, it's such precious, precious time because it's like a play date with the divine where every now and then I just, things just get revealed to me. I sometimes have to stop the movie just to process all the downloads that, that I receive. Now, I'd love to share that with listeners, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to get that movie so that I can match it with my, down, with my downloads. But for me, it, it comes very, very natural. It's, that is um, who I am. That is my expression in this world. And it, it is like that. Because when I was in primary school, I asked the divine, I, I just said, I really like all these parables, but I want them to be modern day and very child friendly. <laughs> and now as an adult, I get it. So um, that's what I love. But okay, I'm thinking about it. If you guys have got any suggestions, I'm open to that because that's fun, fun, fun. And I like to learn through fun. Um, and and it's never what we think it is because remember I try to to the, the ego can only ask not answer so the answers are so unique and so beautiful and so relevant and so easy and so simple I cannot explain it to someone sometimes I do get friends that say oh I want to watch that movie with you because and then with a view of just sharing with them all the insights that come through. But that's it. Okay. Uh, there's absolutely no... Um, oh. If you must follow someone, 
follow your heart. Yeah, how do I? <laughs> okay, I liked, I was now so excited in my own little play date with the divine, I totally forgot how do I end my, my videos. Oh, <laughs> there's really no need to subscribe, but if you must follow someone, follow your own heart. <laughs>